Welcome back to Sports Seriously. March Madness is behind us, but we are gearing up for plenty more drama on the court. Yes, the NBA playoffs are here, and we know the Twitterverse is in playoff form as well with their takes. So with that being said, it's time to play some NBA Twitter Verified. And who better to join us than for the win's finest, Charles Curtis and Mike Sykes. Y'all, thank you so much for being here. I love having you guys on. Glad to be here. It's playoff time. I, I couldn't be happier. Let's go. Amen to that. All right. So, well, you guys know how this goes. So we're going to read you some tweets about hot NBA storylines, and you're going to tell us if it's on point or not, in this case, verified or unverified. So let's dive right into it, and we'll start in the city of brotherly love. So the Sixers just entered the playoffs as the fourth seed and certainly have the pieces to make some noise in a deep run. Of course, this all comes on the heels of Joel Embiid winning his first ever scoring title. Obviously, this is a great accomplishment, but... Twitter is quick to do what Twitter does. So here's what some users had to say. He's the first scoring leader to have all his points come from free throws. Another said, free throw merchant. We all know LeBron should have won, sadly. Finally, one user said, half of these points are free throws. He's literally Window Carter Jr. without them. So Mike, we'll start with you. Yes, it's no secret that Joel Embiid finds himself at the charity stripe quite often, but these Twitter users for some reason seem to be going really hard in on this. So in your opinion, is this criticism verified or unverified? This is totally unverified. They Honestly, they just hate him, man. Like Joel Embiid is one of the best players, one of the three best players, I will say, in the NBA right now. And yeah, you know, he's a scoring champ and a lot of that does come from free throws. But at the end of the day, you have to get fouled to go to the free throw line. And if he's getting fouled that much, that just means everybody else can't guard him. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say this is unverified. They hate and, and <laughs> they need to delete their accounts for it. Yeah. And Charles, another reoccurring theme in these Indeed threads center around Nikola Jokic being the superior basketball player and clearly more deserving of the MVP award. So would you say that's verified or unverified? It is verified that Nikola Jokic deserves the MVP this year, a back back MVP. I mean, the thing is, like, if you looked at all the advanced metrics, beyond the fact that he's doing his usual thing where he's passing, like, uh, you know, uh, doing this and, you know, like he's an N1 mixtape, uh, you know, and, and shooting from the outside and all that, like, all of that is true. But the defensive metrics this year show that he's actually one of the better defenders in the NBA. And that's, like, kind of crazy when you think about it. Mm -hmm. And that to me just adds on to the resume. But like Sykes said, we shouldn't be hating on the resume. And also, can I just ask, what is wrong with foul hunting? We all were like, <laughs> oh, James Harden, you know, like uh, James Harden, you know, James gets fouled left and right. They tend to change the rules because of that. There's no big deal about that. Look, if you play to the referees and you get fouled and you get to the free throw line for the charity strike, like that's the whole point. Like that is totally fine and totally valid. And well, with all that being said, Jokic and the Nuggets will meet up with the Warriors in the first round of the playoffs, which is a ridiculous opening first round matchup, but with one caveat, if we get a healthy Steph Curry involved. So the Warriors point guard has been out of action with a foot injury since March, and here's the craziest part. He still finished the regular season with the most three-pointers in the league. So a guy misses a whole month, still made the most threes. There's no more debate that he is the greatest shooter of all time. I think we can agree on that. but. Is it time to take a step further? One user posted a picture of LeBron James, Michael Jordan, and Kobe Bryant, then captioned it, quote, I don't see Steph Curry. So, Charles, verified or not, is it time to start thinking of Steph as one of the ghosts of basketball, period, and not just the goat of shooting? I, I verify the heck out of that and, and start thinking about it. We should have been starting to think about him being one of the goats a long time ago. I mean, think about, let's think about eras, right? We talk about, you know, some of the all-time greats, like let's go back to the year I grew up in, Hakeem Olajuwon, guys like that. People say, oh, if he was playing in today's game, he wouldn't be that good. Well, Steph Curry is playing in this era, and he is defining this era. So, yeah, he absolutely should be and should be in the last few years been in that GOAT conversation. By the time his career is over, yes, he is already the greatest shooter of all time, better than Ray Allen, better than Reggie Miller, you know, guys like that. So, I still think that that when it's all said and done, we will be talking about one of the greatest guards to ever play the game of all time. And that conversation eh, probably should have happened a couple of years ago. I mean, the, the rings, the MVPs, come on. Like, this is too easy. Well, finally, how do we not talk about it? The Los Angeles Lakers with LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook did not make the playoffs. <sighs> Frank Vogel has been let go as a head coach. But the next name on the chopping block may be Westbrook. So he's taking most of the heat of anyone in the Lakers' downfall, and trade rumors are already starting to swirl. But in an odd turn for the Twitterverse, they seem to actually be defending Russ. So one user pointed out that Russ leads the Lakers in almost every stat category this year. 
Another simply had to say this, quote, this man is arguably MVP of the Lakers, no cap. So Mike, <laughs> verified or not, Russ is not to blame here and he just continues to be the all-time scapegoat in the NBA. No, there's no question that Russell Westbrook was bad for the Lakers this year. He was mm -hmm. the absolute opposite of what they needed. He wasn't the shooter that they needed. He wasn't the off-ball cutter that they needed. He wasn't the defender that they needed. But at the end of the day, I think that Russell Westbrook does get a little bit too much of the blame because he thought that it would work a lot better and that he would work with Anthony Davis and LeBron James in, in a much better light than he actually did. And, and to me, it was just the rest of the roster and how poorly it was constructed that was really the thing here. It was, you know, Russ, AD, Bron, and a bunch of guys on minimum contracts. And mm -hmm. that's what the Lakers were, man. So honestly, this, this thing was never going to work this year. And I feel like Russ probably gets a little bit too much of the blame for that. I, I think, honestly, for me, it's Rob Palenka and it's LeBron James. Oh, isn't the world just a better place when the Lakers are a total disaster? <laughs> it seems like it. But from one failing team to a program on the rise, we dive into the U.S. men's national soccer team with Carly Lloyd, Alex Morgan, and Nancy Armour after the break. Hey, sports fans. If you want to watch more sports seriously, be sure to check out these clips right here. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel to see all the great content from us here at USA Today Sports.